Today we are out in the very smoky Eastern Washington area, checking out this 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss in this radiant red tank coat color. We're gonna check out some of the features and some of the things this truck has to offer and see where it stacks up against the competition in this mid-size truck segment. Later on in the video, we're also gonna do a quick towing test to see how this does as this is a class leader for towing capacity. For the 2023 model year, you do get a all new redesign for the Colorado and you can see it in the front fascia and the hood here. We have a nice aggressive hood complementing the all new front fascia design. New headlights that are halogen on this trim. The Trail Boss is based off of the work truck platform, so it is gonna be pretty basic in that sense. No fog lights, nice grill design in the Trail Boss logo here, indicating that this is a special version. Down below, we do have functional tow hooks and in the front, we do have a approach angle of 30.5 degrees. Wheelbase for the Colorado is 131.4 inches, overall length 213.2 inches, which makes this just a little bit larger in overall length and size than the Tacoma, which is a competitor in this midsize truck segment. Overall weight for the Colorado is 4,971 pounds, and this Trail Boss is 200 pounds heavier than the work truck, which it's based off of due to a couple things like different rear axle, bigger tires, and things like that. For wheels, tires, and suspension, this is what makes the Trail Boss a Trail Boss. So starting off, we have a 265 6518 Goodyear Wrangler Territory All-Terrain wrapped around a 18-inch aluminum gloss black wheel. That paired with the 2-inch factory installed suspension, which is uh, 3 inches wider track width, gets you a total ground clearance of 9.5 inches. If that is not enough for you, you can go top of the line, trim the ZR2, which gets you 10.7 inches of ground clearance. The redesign continues in the rear. Taking a look at the taillights, these are incandescent taillights, no LEDs. We have a camera back here, as well as the embossed Chevrolet logo down below, Colorado. And then this is, this is equipped with the trailer package. So we have a four pin as well as a seven pin, obviously the two inch receiver right there. We open this up, it is a damped tailgate going down, ruler across the edge of that. If we pop these latches open right here, we do have a storage compartment that looks to be weather sealed, but I have seen water get in here. This does have the bed liner, which is a $475 option, and there is no power outlet in the rear. This Trail Boss is a crew cab short bed, which is the only option you can get for the Trail Boss trim. At the end of this five foot bed on the corners, you do have these steps to easily access the interior of the bed, which is nice because it does have that two inch lift, so making it the bed height a little bit higher. Under the hood, we have a 2.7 liter inline four turbo plus, which is uh, one of three options for the Colorado. It falls right in the middle of the three. First, we have the 237 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque engine option or power option. In the middle is what we have, 310 horsepower, 391 pound feet of torque. And then the top dog is the 310 horsepower, 430 pound feet of torque. But if you wanna get that max power, you can option this truck with the optional uh, package from the factory to get you a different tune to get you that max power. This is all paired to an eight speed automatic transmission getting you a 19 miles per gallon combined rating. And if you pair this with a trailer package, which is $620, you get a class leading 7,700 pounds of towing capacity. In the front, we have 45.2 inches of legroom, 40.3 inches of headroom, eight way power adjustable driver's seat and a four way manual adjustable passenger seat. These are cloth seats, but they are fairly comfortable and cradle you well inside the seat. And I am six foot one legs towards proportionate and I do find that I can get more comfortable in this driver position than I can in a competitor like the Tacoma. In the rear, we have 30.7 inches of legroom, 38.3 inches of headroom. And overall, pretty comfortable back here. This front seat is adjusted to where I would be sitting. And I am kind of touching, but if I tuck my feet far enough under, I have about an inch or two of space in between my knees and the seat. Overall amenities back here, we do just have two air vents, no charging ports, two cup holders, and then no, no storage cubbies behind the front seats. Overall between the front and the back, it is a more comfortable interior space than the competitor, the Toyota Tacoma. One interesting thing about the Colorado they missed on is there is no center armrest or cup holder that folds down. But one nice thing is there's a lever on the side, you pull that, lift this up, and there is storage space underneath the rear seats. Center console is nice and padded. Inside of it, we do have a removable cubby. Pretty basic center console overall. We do have a 12 volt socket inside and a removable little pad for the bottom. We do have two cup holders in front of that with this nice camouflage design that you can find throughout the interior. In front of that, we do have a gloss black surround for the gear selector and drive mode selector. Drive mode selector doubles as a uh, two-speed transfer case selector. So we do have 
Um, a couple different options we can choose from. Four wheel drive auto, four high, four low, or we can just go back to our two high. Turning the outside of the knob, you can select your drive modes that we'll talk about here in a minute. In front of all that, we do have a nice cubby that carries on with that camouflage design. This is not a wireless charger, at least in this trim. Above that, we do have chargers, a USB type C, USB type A. We have an 11 inch infotainment display, as well as a eight inch digital gauge cluster where that comes standard in all trims minus the ZR2. The ZR2 gets an 11 inch infotainment as well as an 11 inch digital gauge cluster. Since this is the Trail Boss, we do have some off-road goodies. So we have some apps that we can select. We go on the off-road app, we have Baja Terrain Overlanding, just gives you different types of telemetry that you can access when you are off-roading. Going back to the menu, we have an air down mode, and we can change the threshold for alerts if we are going to air down our tires going off-road. This is a Google Maps driven infotainment system, so there is no proprietary navigation, which is nice because Google always updates and it is very responsive. Speaking of responsive, the screen is very responsive and very snappy. Nice colors, and it's nice that it comes standard in all trims, all the way from work truck all the way up to the ZR2. Now that we've talked a little bit about the Colorado Trail Boss, I brought in Scott. This is my buddy Scott. We were over at his house here in Eastern Washington. Say hi, Scott. Hey, everybody. We're going to be towing his side-by-side -side and trailer behind the Colorado and see what it's like to tow. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what yeah, we're going to be towing? Yeah, absolutely. This is a Big Tex CH70. It's a 16-footer, dual axle. Weighs about 1,760 pounds, but I added the extra spare tire, so let's just call it 1,800. Then we're gonna load up my Can-Am X3. It's the four-seater. It's about 1,900 pounds, but I've added a winch and some other things. So let's just call this total load about 4,000 pounds. Right on. So before we do that, before we load it onto the truck, we are gonna measure from the bottom of this uh, fender flare to the ground and see what the height is. And then we're gonna load the trailer on there, put it onto the hitch and see how much this uh, rear sags. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds good. Without the trailer attached, we are looking at about 38 and a quarter, 38 inches and a quarter for unloaded. So let's load on the side by side and see how much it sags. All right, we're loaded up, let's go. Just kidding. Now that we have the actual side by side loaded up, let's go ahead and measure and see how much we have squatted. So I think we were 38 and a quarter when we started, right? Yep, 38 and a quarter. We're sitting at 36 and a half. Just about two inches. Pretty equal uh, distribution on the trailer. Twin axle, engine in the rear, so not, not, a lot, a lot. not a lot of tongue weight. So let's go ahead and tow it and see how this thing does. Sounds great. So now we are on the open road and we are cruising right now about 45. And if I just punch it, I can definitely feel the weight behind me. That that torque, that that mid-range torque is no longer there. It's being used up, obviously, to tow that 4,000 pounds, but you can hear that turbo whistle. They're clearly pushing either a lot of boost or it's a massive turbo, or both. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure I can find that information online. Yeah, but, you definitely noticed that when you first pulled out of the neighborhood, at first you go, wow, that's, that's doing pretty good. Yeah. And then it really got out of the meat of the torque, mm -hmm. and now we're on the road, and now you can feel it really is feeling all 4,000 pounds of that trailer. Yeah, exactly, and we are in tow haul mode, so uh, there's a few different drive modes you can select from. So we have tow haul, we have terrain, normal, and off-road. So go back into tow haul, and that just gives us a little more RPM before shifts. Kind of keeps us in that power band. Yeah. But the biggest thing right now is just the suspension. So we're only at 4,000 pounds, not a lot of tongue weight. Um, two inches of droop right now, or two inches of uh, sag, sag compression, whatever you want to call it, with this trailer. But I notice a lot of jostling. It's jostling, and you can yeah. feel that now that it's on that real thick leaf spring, the ride quality is pretty compromised. Yeah. Whereas when you hook this up to a full-size truck, you're not on there yet, and it actually tames down the full-size trucks. The yeah. rides get better. But in this, it seems like it's quite a bit more jostly than it was unloaded. Yeah. The big things, the big takeaways from this truck are cabin noise while we're driving is incredible. Really quiet. Like it's really quiet. There are a couple of like, right now I can hear, there's like a jack and some tools underneath that uh, seat in that storage area in the back. And I can hear those things kind of clacking about yeah. because now the ride's a lot worse. Yeah, before so, it was just kind of every once in a while. Yeah. Now it's constant. Right. So cabin noise unloaded, like no trailer is great. Cabin noise, there's a little bit of like dinging here and there from the tools in the back. Um, and the cabin noise, like just road noise is a little bit worse because you have more pressure on those rear wheels, but nothing really too bad. This isn't bad for a 
mid-size truck. No, absolutely not. I had a diesel Colorado that I towed with. It was 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing I can already tell, while this does feel quite labored over the 40 miles an hour, my 2.8 Duramax, which was really well loved, it ran out of so much steam above mm -hmm. 40 miles an hour. It could maintain speed, but yeah. it didn't even have the pickup that this did. Would you say that this, like, this powertrain has very similar characteristics to a diesel. It feels like it so far. Yeah. It absolutely does. It doesn't feel like it, especially when you hook the trailer up, it felt more diesel-y with the trailer than it was on load. It kind of feels yeah. like the best of both worlds. Yeah, so we're gonna get onto this freeway. Right now we're on the on-ramp. It's kind of a long on-ramp. Once we get on, we're gonna need to get up to speed pretty quick because it is a very short on-ramp. Um, and you're gonna be able to see this thing struggles a little bit. It feels it. Yeah, you're gonna hear that turbo start whistling. You're going to start seeing some jostle because this is a rough part of the freeway. But once it downshifts, it does pick up. A, you know what? When it gets into me, <laughs> yeah. it, once it gets past 4,000 RPM, it's kind of dead. But from like three to four, it drives like a diesel. The one thing I like about the Fords versus the GMs always is that the Ford has the transmission display. And it tells you what gear you're in. That's a cool feature that they yeah. do. That is one thing I wish I had on this, even when I'm not towing, is knowing what gear I'm in. Yeah. Just so I can kind of gauge like what the power is like and speed, and things of that nature. So we're gonna go for an overpass here. We got a wide load in front of us. Okay, so now we're at 2,800 RPM, about 76 to 80 miles an hour. Train step is now 210. And it cruises pretty good, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like I'd be comfortable driving down to Utah or something like that. Yeah, we're on a good part of the highway for sure. Yeah. But yeah. if you want to be uh, concise, it can absolutely safely tow a good sized trailer with a good heavy load on it comfortably. Yeah. So overall, I think driving on the highway is pretty good. Like it, it definitely finds its power between two and 4,000 RPM. And I kind of keep going back because I'm learning how this thing's towing yeah. as I'm going. So, like, if I said like it wouldn't have the power, and now I'm saying it does, forgive me. We're all learning as, yeah. as we're towing. But what do you think this would compare to, you've actually spent a lot of time in a Tacoma, because one of our good friends had a Tacoma with that 3.5 in it. Yeah. And what do you think? Like, if you were to hook this trailer to a Tacoma. I wouldn't hook this trailer to a Tacoma. Really? The suspension is way softer. And no trailer brake, right? No factory trailer brake controller, yeah. um, which is of that generation. Uh, there, no matter what option you did, you're not getting one. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't tow this with it. Could you do it? Absolutely. Uh, but I have towed trailers with Tacomas for work in the past, and uh, this is so quiet and comfortable towing compared to what a Tacoma would do. It's overall pretty smooth. It definitely has a little jostle. That's the biggest thing. Right. It kind of just feels like you're constantly being tugged back by that It's trailer. the porpoising. Yeah, it's the porpoising. Other than that, like once you're at cruising speed, pretty solid. Now, I think your fuel economy is going to be absolutely destroyed. So, <laughs> let's see what we're doing. That's absolutely the case. I don't, let's see. Because you have to find. choose. You either choose fuel economy or you choose boost. You know, yeah. you don't get both. So, right now, we're passing a couple of slow movers on the freeway. And I have my miles per gallon, the instant miles per gallon pulled up. And I'm seeing right now, cruising at 75 miles an hour, I'm seeing anywhere from 11 to 13 miles per gallon. Yeah. Which, in all reality, is not that bad. No. Like it's not bad towing 4,000 pounds. Now, what will that number be when you start towing almost 8,000 pounds? I bet single digits. Right. Yeah. And who knows, like if you were to go on a long trip like you're going down to Utah, there are a lot of big passes. Yeah, this, would be, this thing would be in the revs. This thing would be fight for its life, I think. What's great, this over a Tacoma, talking about doing that, is that it's turbocharged. Yep. So when you're doing the 5,000, 6,000 foot passes, this motor at least has a chance. Mm -hmm. If you're going over those pa same passes with a Tacoma, you're gonna wrap that motor out. I think it absolutely, not think, it will absolutely would do it. Yeah. yeah. Just not nearly this comfortable. So overall performance I think is, is decent. I think it definitely could be improved low end. But once you're up to cruising speed, and that's kind of where you want your meat and potatoes, is like while you're on the freeway, because you need to be able to pass people or uh, just get up to speed. And, I think it's not too bad for a mid-sized truck, would you agree? I think it's great for a mid-sized truck. Okay, it's great for a mid-sized truck. Okay, that's Scott's Scott's hot take. Talking about braking, this has a brake controller that comes with that trailer package that this is equipped with. Yep. 
Now, I've been talking about the Tacoma. The Tacoma does not have any option for a brake controller. Your, no. thought, your thoughts on the braking of this? I think the braking of the truck performance itself is great. I think the downfall is is that the brake controller location is located in a place that your knee is covering it. Yep. So it's it. My opinion would be is you put it in center stack. That's my only takeaway of a negative for the truck is brake controller location. Yeah. Okay. Well, wrapping up, I think this is a very very solid truck. You know, I gave this truck a lot of grief when I first got it. It's it's based off the work truck platform, so it's pretty cheap inside. It's basic. Right. But it does come standard with an 11 inch infotainment system, digital gauge cluster. Then you can option it with things like we have a uh, brake controller, we have the seven and four pin connectors in the back, we have a rear sliding glass, the bed liner, all those sorts of things. And this does, price wise, come in at just over $41,000. It's a lot of value. It's a lot of value. Yeah. Because if, if you were to go like we've been talking about the Tacoma, the Tacoma, if you wanted to start optioning things like getting these things on here, and like if you wanted to add an aftermarket brake controller, you're well over $41,000. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And these, and these uh, these do start at $37,000 for a four-wheel drive, but when you start optioning things like the paint and the and the packages that we have equipped, over $40,000. So overall, solid truck, and I'm glad I got to uh, review it this week, and I definitely think uh, that this trim level is is kind of the best of both worlds, off-road and towing. I love it. Yeah, and it's not too expensive. You know, you start going the ZR2, and you start getting way up there in price in the 50s. I love trucks that just are trucks. All right. And this is a truck. It tows, it can off-road, it's yeah. durable from yeah. what we can tell. Not much else. That's it. Yeah. My name is Nick and Scott, our guest here. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Until the next review, I will see you guys then. Later.